hello everyone and welcome back to Nip Gaming TV. My name is Kai and I. I'm solo casting a uh, Gennarino. And uh, as you can see, we've got XPC Gaming versus Infused. Uh, for anyone who's obviously been following the Go Champions League and seen XPC playing before, you're probably wondering, hold on a second, why have they got a Polish flag? Uh, basically, what happened was the team has changed. So literally the entire team has changed and uh, the decision was made to basically allow the complete new team within this organization to basically just slide in and take um, control of the spot that the older team had now there is like an actual justified reason for it because uh, obviously in theory it sounds like a ridiculously stupid idea but I do believe that uh, there is a, an actual decent reason behind it that the admins told me about but i just completely forgot about but yeah meanwhile infuse obviously they're a team i know well because i cast a lot of uk counter-strike and they're playing with two stand-ins today uh, apologies about uh, the map changing again it's just the beauty of go tv i guess um yeah they're missing two quite important players they're obviously missing red snake and windansky now, no idea where Red Snake is, no idea where Windansky is. I, from what I can remember, Windansky was having problems trying to play CS on his PC because there's like a keylogger or something installed on his PC and he keeps getting hacked. So I don't know if that has something to do with it. Um, as far as Red Snake's concerned, I have no idea where he is. Um, so he could be a significant loss because he's normally their in-game leader. So obviously we've got Neil M. And Reeston coming in to uh, replace them. Reeston, obviously, many people will recognise him. He's quite a popular CS:GO streamer, and uh, he was most recently in Belgrade, representing the Norwegian national CS:GO team. So, a uh, very good player. Meanwhile, Neil, uh, he was also in Belgrade, except he wasn't playing. He was casting. Uh, Neil's been around in the UK Counter Strike scene for quite some time. Um, he's actually come from the 1.6 team mainly, and he's been a manager for quite a few uh, UK teams, mainly uh, Infused and uh, most recently Choke Gaming. So yeah, TibXD asking in the chat, what's happening? Is an XPC a Romanian team? Again, like I said, XPT, XPT, XPC as an organization have changed their team midway through this league. Now, there's a, a proper justification behind why this new Polish team can come in and, uh, and and just steal their spot. But both the league and the orgs came to the decision in a logical manner, I'm told. So, yeah, XPC are now this Polish team, and this Polish team need to try and pick up essentially where the Romanian team left off, in theory. So... Uh, that will explain why they're now a Polish team. As well, map number one, as you can see, is going to be Mirage. Map number two will be Cash. And the third map, should we require it, will be Dust 2. So Infused have chosen Mirage. XPC have chosen Cash. And the third map, obviously, which is based off of what's left has ended up being dust too. But we are going to go straight into the knife round. This does mean that I'm going to have to do <laughs> two Mirage games in a row, but I don't mind, I guess. Prediction-wise, I've never really seen this XPC team play before. But... I don't know. It, it's, a t it's a difficult one to predict simply because I don't know much about this XPC lineup. If it was Infused full on lineup, you know, I'd put my heart on my sleeve and say, right, Infused, I'm going to support you. But even right now, without Red Snake, their in game leader, um, Neil M would probably be calling the strats uh, for Infused as things currently stand. So, I don't know. It's a tough one. And Reeston is more than enough of a match for Windansky, who's not here today. He's a brilliant fragger. So. Like I said, it's going to be a very, very difficult one to predict. So let me know in the chat, guys, who you think will emerge victorious in this best of three. I am told that the game will be going live very, very shortly. Joe Pajo in the chat needs to support Infuse because he played for their Dota team. Fair enough. 
because right, they're from the UK. Yeah. I mean, my gut feeling tells me that because of the two standings that Infused have, XPC will just about edge it. I think we're going to have two very close maps and XPC will win 2 0. But if Infused had their full lineup, I'd definitely be rooting for them. But uh, yeah. Here we go. We're live. And XPC sending three men straight towards the B bomb site, leaving the mass majority of their men just outside the A bomb site. Should they decide to execute thick and fast? It's only Aaron and Reeston with smokes, then they should be able to overpower DH Shen at the back of the bomb site all by himself. Be great if Crucial could get that first frag at mid two. The nade's going to go down, it's going to land right in front of Zed. That is going to make things a bit difficult, but Norbiak is going to see Infused players making their way into connect to spot the second one as well. After taking off the face of Crucial, there's the double from Norbiak. Fantastic play from the pole, and DHM will stop the bomb from getting planted too. Can he make it two in a row? He cannot as Reeston gets to return frag, and now Reeston is all alone. He's picked up the bomb. He's making his way towards CT spawn, but he has three very, very frustrated and angry CTs looking to hunt him down. And there's not really anywhere he can go. He can try and go through CT spawn, but the second that XBC realize that, they'll just rotate an extra man into jungle. And there we have it. Reeston, not much he could do. And the first round of the first map has been confirmed in favor of XPC. On that more favored CT side as well. Like we covered earlier on when we covered a, uh, a Mirage game, it uh, can be so important sometimes when you are on the terrorist side of Mirage to, you know, win that pistol round and build up an early 3 0 lead. You're only really expected to get five or six rounds, so the second you win that pistol, you almost guarantee yourself half the job done. In this case, not meant to be. Neil M's going to pop the flash straight out of Palace, and they're going to try and. Hunt down this, again, Lone Ranger over towards the A bomb side, but so far, the firepower far too strong. Lunatic with a headshot. Lunatic will make it a double as the rest of the XPC boys chime in with their own for masses. And this Armor Tech 9 Viper from uh, Crucial & Co. Really um, failing to, to make an impact. And the, I mean... Even if they don't plant the bomb, they should be hoping to get at least one or two frags. And uh, that didn't occur in the end. Just to force the rebuys out the CTs and keep the financial pressure on them. It's a lot more difficult to try and build up an economy on the CT side. With it being a lot more expensive. This could be interesting though. The flash going towards underground from uh, Diamond. He's got a peek as well. Reeston is still lurking in the shadows. Aaron's coming in at the top of mid, but not much he can do with only a Glock. And the rest will pretty much get devoured by XPC. DHM will whip off the face of Zed. And uh, they know exactly where Crucial is. Making his way in from A ramp, and they should be able to give him farewell too. And there it is, 3 0. XPC, we'd expect them to swap out some of these submachine guns for some M4s. DHN, Lunatic, and Diamond wouldn't surprise me if they stuck with their for masses more than a match for the AK-47s, even though the AK-47s, of course, are still a better weapon. But if XPC were to lose his first gun round, I believe they may just about have enough to mount up a proper... Well, it wouldn't be a proper buy, a bit of a force buy to try and make things 4-1 uh, in case it does end up being 3-1. Meanwhile, Infused, no sign of Crucial's all-important AWP. Obviously, they're not going to be able to afford it. But two smokes. One for Aaron, one for Zed. And talking about Aaron, that's a lovely headshot straight onto DayJV and Neil M as well. Their manager will find the headshot onto Lunatic. But Diamond is looking quick to pounce back and return. Reeston dealing the damage from the top of mid whilst Diamond fights on it. That nade could be the final blow, you know. No, Reeston somehow manages to dodge out of the way. And it's still somehow advantage two team infused. We've got Neil M and a player behind him in Reeston, both making their way towards a ramp after getting that mid control. They're leaving Aaron at mid, thanks to that mid control. Underground, maybe to try and catch off any CTs looking to rotate down off short towards Connector. 
the execution onto A will be coming in fast. Zed's going to spray and pray, but his spray's not actually going to meet anything. Aaron somehow gets a second kill. The ex-team Dignitas man from 1.6. And now Demon in a 1 versus 3. All the team infused players are very low on HP, so this clutch may very well be real. Neil Lamb's going to pop flash out, but Demon's going to get the headshot, and now it's all down to the Norwegian International to save the round for infused, and Reeston just about does it. Very, very, very close. Coming out for team infused. They ended up losing two men, so that's two AKs being forced to be rebought as well. Not really ideal, but. At least looking at the positives, they've finally gotten that first all-important round on the board. And as expected, XPC can still just about mount up and buy. Lunatic's going to pick up the AWP as well, because he hasn't bought for a few rounds. Hold on to that for mass. Norbiak made his way into the whole house. Prefires Del Palmer. Crucial is quick to return. And it makes you wonder, making it a 4 versus 4 really does seem to favour terrorists a lot more. Crucial, he doesn't have his orb, but he's getting these crucial frags at mid. Fantastic play from him. As this CT side starts to crumble for XPC. Aaron all eyes towards B, and that's where the bomb's going to join him too. Crucial heading underground to meet up with the rest of the troops. Is that underground, or is that... Sure. Yeah, he has gone underground. So that's going to be three infused players going towards B. And Aaron just trying to play with the other CTs towards A. But he has thrown those flashes out and he's going to go back through T-spawn now. So I'm not sure whether XPC are going to buy the fake. But of course the call is going to be coming in now that we're 35 seconds on the clock. There are men, infused men, looking to plant this bomb who are hungry to win a second round. Heading towards a B bomb site. Rotation has come in. Reeston finds a frag onto Lunatic and Crucial. Can he make it a hat trick for himself this round? He definitely can. We've got Reeston, national player for the Norwegian team. And Crucial, a national player for the Netherlands team. And it's looking good for Infuse. Finally shutting down that economy that XPC built up after taking a 3-0 lead. And now they're going to be the ones forced onto uh, only pistols. THN has a Gil has a Galil, has a Deagle, and DJV has a P250. But no armor on either of these players. Only Diamond with the flashback. So Infused expecting this. Sticking together as a unit, not wanting to give away any of these weapons. Aaron somehow going to manage to blow up Reese and his teammate. But we should still see Neil M with this Mac Daddy. See things off the team infused. Bomb has been planted, and now the best bet for XPC is to try and just essentially hold infused on this bomb site. If they can hold infused on this bomb site and force them into taking damage when the bomb goes off, then they'll lose a lot of these weapons. Diamond's left fighting on with only a USPS. Neil M will nail him in the face. And Lunatic, where is he hiding? He's actually hiding in the whorehouse, but I'm not quite sure any infused players are going to be coming his way. And the bomb will go off. Terrorists win. Three, all the score. Solid stuff from Infused. They're going 3-0 down. Not letting their heads drop. Coming back all guns blazing, quite literally. And unlocking this XPC defence three times. And now it's time to see whether XPC are going to shake off what just occurred and rack more rounds up on the board. Got Aaron and Neil M just waiting outside the B-bomb site, making sure no CTs go aggressive. DHN again, pretty much the lone ranger over towards the A-bomb site by himself. Even though Diamond is there quick to help, it's very easy to sort of cancel him out in the position he's in just with a single smoke or two smokes coming over from the outside of the A-bomb site. The mid control is important though for Infuse. Gives them a gateway towards short. They could try and boost into window room to flank around the A-bomb site. And of course the connector control. So it's just a case of seeing what approach Infuse opt to take. The bomb's being left at the top of mid to make sure it does not get lost. And that Molotov from Neil M will force out Norbiak to show himself in the whorehouse. 
It's a very, very slow approach from Infuse. The Crucial's going to run straight to the M4 of Demon. Well expected from him. And the question is now, where on earth are Infuse going to try and dedicate to? With 25 seconds on clock, on the clock, you can tell it's been a long day of solo casting. Um, they need to act fast. 20 seconds, and the second that Infuse get a kill, XPC are going to be quick, rotating round. Reeston gets a double, and the A bomb site is suddenly in the hands, in the gloves, in the property of Team Infuse. And we quickly see both DGV and Lunatic leaving CT spawn. They no longer wish to rotate. And uh, Neil M, very, very great anticipation from him. Zed's going to look to join in on the action as well. They want to make sure none of these XPC players save any of these weapons. Both the players are going to hunt the CTs down together. And they will put Infused in the lead. 4-3 the score. XBC back on the pistols. And on Zed, he's actually wandered off to the top of mid to take them on by himself. He's gotten a kill, but if he ends up getting fragged back, one of the CTs realizes no one else is at the top of mid, picks up an AK. It could become somewhat problematic. The good thing though for Infuse is they managed to walk onto the A bomb site. Both Aaron and Crucial going ham up against these unarmored opponents. And I'd be very surprised at this point if Infuse did not guarantee the 5 3 scoreline. And there it is. Aaron gets the kill. 5 3 the score. And just to clarify, this is a best of three. Map number one is this Mirage. Map number two will be Cash, which of course will be XPC's pick. And map number three will be Dust 2, which of course is the final decider. Diamond lobbing that nade towards the top left of mid. Dealing a bit of damage onto Reeston, but <laughs> Infuse retaliated towards him with nades of their own. So Diamond's been put down onto 54. This is a lower bracket game, so Infuse will essentially, if they win this, will fight on to potentially put themselves a place in the... Uh, knockout stages of this tournament. They can beat one more team, which will be the team that lose in the upper bracket final. But in general, Neil M will lead the charge towards B. XPC haven't really after winning the pistol and the next two rounds really put up much of a fight. Like I said, this is the first time I see this Polish XPC lineup after they dropped their Romanian team. And early impressions suggest that their Romanian team are somewhat slightly more solid. Bomb slowly skipping and making its way towards the B bomb site. Meanwhile, both the XPC players pretty much here taking a gamble. They know they're four versus two. They've just decided right. Hopefully, it gets planted on A. You know, so we can try and retake the A bomb site. But now they're not even interested in that. They're just going to hold each other's backs and hope to deal damage to this terrorist economy. DHN has realized how he's going to be coming from spawn. He's going to spray him down. But that, of course, gives away the CT position in two Reeston. And that's going to be pretty much almost both CTs flashed. Reeston lands the headshot onto DHN before Diamond returns it. And now on 27 HP, he's got to try... And hold on to what he's got. I'm not sure Zed has it anywhere near enough time to try and catch up with Diamond. But Diamond gets a kill on Crucial nonetheless. So that's going to be Crucial forcing to rebuying that AWP. An XPC, that round loss bonus has finally started to kick in. Lunatic really playing like a lunatic as he makes his way all the way up to the top of mid. But Aaron, in successive fashion, gets two kills. 
But she really should not have been able to get the secondary seat. He should have finished things off. Diamond's given away his position. He's going to get done from behind, surely. Maybe not. And can DGV get the kill onto Aaron at mid? He can, so he suddenly evens things up at two versus two. But still, HP-wise, you still have to favour both Neil M and Zed. Molotov being thrown straight into the connector, but no one's going to get burned or barbecued just yet. And all Neil M and Zed can really do here is try and play a patient game. Neil M showed too much skin. At least that's given away the positioning of the CTs. Zed now... He's not going to get fully flashed. So if he can turn this 2 versus 1 into 2 1 versus 1 battles, he could potentially win this. Drops down, gets the clutch. Fantastic play from George Z. Bear. An XPC sent back to the Stone Age, back to CT spawn, and infused. Flying the UK flag proud. With not just seven rounds, but economically. They're looking very fine as well. Zed on over 14k. Aaron on over 7k. It's PC at the moment. Don't know what hit them. And as someone just said in the chat, where is the game to watch? Because XPC are being torn a completely new one. And with the second map being Cash, Cash 2 is one of Infused's favourite maps, so the veto definitely hasn't been a successful one whatsoever for XPC. I think XPC may have prioritised removing maps that they don't feel comfortable on, rather than prioritising removing maps that Infused are really solid on. I mean, Infused's best maps are essentially Mirage, Cash, and Dust2. And those three maps are what XPC have ended up with in this veto. So we could maybe see an infused 2-0. That's DJV's position given away. And Zed and Crucial are going to attack him from both sides. Should be an easy kill, or maybe not. Zed's actually going to go down, but like I said early on, Infuse won't really mind. They've got plenty of money to try and waste. And uh, XP City, expect the odd Phallus here or there. Might even see a Scout pop up into the mix. Unless XP City, interestingly, decide to eco this round and just try and play around DGV. But honestly, just feel like they may as well have just forced things up and brought out the FAMASs. Or even, you know, the odd P90 here and there. Because are XPC really going to give up nine rounds to Infuse? I don't know. I mean, it's somewhat appalling from an XPC point of view. But they pretty much guaranteed themselves going into the more difficult terrorist side. Without the lead. So, let's see whether this picked up AK from Lunatic can make a difference. He's already gotten one kill with a CZ75. Diamond's quite low on HP. He's just playing with the P250, trying to use the cover on this bomb site. But the bomb making its way towards B again. Zed timing that peak from Palace to perfection. But regardless, XPC still not opt-in to rotate all their men over towards B. Lunatic's going to watch A. DGV is going to watch B. And Zed is going to fall back and most likely... Try and hook up with the rest of his teammates. That smoke is going to land around jungle, I believe, from the B side of the map. So that could very well fool XPC that it's going to be an attack towards the A bomb site. But here we go. Infused, they've left things late. But they're coming out all guns ablazing. DJV, can he prevent the attack? Crucial says no. And now all that's left for the counter-terrorist team is Lunatic with an AK, 14 HP, and a dream. Crucial's an easy potential kill, but Aaron isn't going to be whatsoever, and there we have it. Lunatic pulls out, doesn't want anything to do with this bomb site, and Infused will win yet another round.
So even though Infuse are playing with two stand-ins up against a full-on proper team, doesn't really look like it, does it? Scoreboard-wise, Reeston, without a surprise really, is topping the scoreboard with 13 kills all by himself. That's almost double what Aaron, Neil, Crucial and Zed have. <laughs> It goes to show, even though he's a stand-in, he's definitely fitting well into this lineup. But that's a nice start for Norbiak. Gets the first kill for the CT side. On to Neil M. Zed's given away his position in Palace. But it's just a case of Infused trying to find an opener onto either of these two bomb sites. Before going in with the bomb. Aaron could very well prepare with a smokes with a step smoke. That's the position he's... Yep. He's still in the right position to pull off that smoke. And it will go over and smoke off steps. But it doesn't mean that Lunatic still can't be stood at the lower steps area and potentially dodge and dive as the infused players come in. Unless there's a secondary smoke towards the bottom of jungle. And there will be. This could be really good, but XBC throw their Molotov. Slow down this infused push. Zed is going to lead the charge in by somehow managing to get a warbang onto Lunatic. And now DHN, pretty much the last line of defense until the reinforcements come in. Aaron gets a kill, DGV gets a kill as well. But Norbiak is going to be the man of the match for XPC, or the man of the round at least, getting three kills to save the day for the Poles. So infused plenty of money to still rebuy things up, even Neil M going for the BM Auto Sniper. But XPC, still a very, very, very steep hill for them to climb. For me, anything less than 9-6 at this point with them... I mean, to keep it simple, XPC need 9-6 for me and need to win the second half pistol. And even things up at 9-9. And then win the first gun round when they're on the terrorist side to really leave them in the chance. If that doesn't happen... I feel quite confident that it's going to end up being a very one-sided game. This isn't the first game, first BO3 I cast today. Solo casting too, so it's a bit tiring. Bear with me, guys. And I guess casting such a one-sided game like this doesn't exactly make it much easier. XPC, they keep con continuously, you know, sort of, when they, when they peak different areas, they're not peaking together as a unit, as a team. Different counter-terrorists always find themselves in a one versus one battle, like this for example. DHN just taking Zed in a one versus one. Lunatic needs to try and help out. Or maybe if Lunatic had moved faster, they could have gotten the kill onto the player on the A-bomb site and been a little bit better prepared for the guy flanking from behind. Lunatic gets a second kill for himself for the round. But his position is being closed in on by the infused SAS. And it does finally take Zed to pull him to bed. But what's important for Team Infuse is they're in a position now where they could even go into the much more favoured CC side here on Mirage with 11 rounds. We were talking about Dignitas versus Flipside earlier on, where Flipside, where Dignitas, sorry, went in to the second half. And I believe it was 8 or 7 rounds on the terrorist side of Mirage. Infused of Trump that. And even though Norbiak has found the first frag, as we saw in the last round, it doesn't actually make that much of a difference because Infused are more than ready to pounce back. XBC not really capitalising on things. And that could be the capitalisation that they needed. And that as well. DHN with the 5-7 rips off the face of Zed. Whilst well, Crucial gets a kill with the AWP. And now it's all down to Reeston to utilise his pop flash and try and mow down furthest counter-terrorist. Crucial all eyes on the stairs area where he is going to manage to take off the face of Norbiak. Meanwhile, Luniak or Lunatic finds a kill on Teresten. And now it's a 1 versus 3. And XPC will not allow Infuse to go into the second half with more than 10 frags or 10 rounds. Oh my god, it's getting late and this solo casting. Sorry guys. 10-5 is your score going into the second half. But again, like I said, if... Infused can win this pistol round on the more favoured CT side, then that could be all, all, all she wrote. 
for XPC. Let's see what approach Infuse are going to take. Both Zed and Neil M, no armor. One person at the top of mid, and two actually going straight towards the V bomb site for uh, for XPC. And that smoke will allow Neil M to get up close and personal with this CZ. Might even climb onto the blue couch and just hide in the corner. But the bomb is actually rotating back towards B. It seems like they're going to put all their eggs in one basket, are the Polish. And try and rush straight through this smoke. If Neil M can get himself two kills here, that would be magnificent for Infused. Crucial as well. Could get the headshot at mid. He's going to spot the man going towards short, so that will be the intel that players are going towards B. There's the nade from Zed. Good stuff. But Zed finally gets caught out by DJV, so it's not over and out for the Polish just yet. Crucial making his way onto short. Gets the headshot. Onto the XPC man. And now at three on three, this is anyone's round. You still favor XPC because of the positioning. Aaron's going to come in and he's going to find the headshot onto DHN. Reeson as well looking to get a kill of his own. And he does. And now it's Aaron and Reeson versus Norbiak. Bomb will get defused and Reeson will land a headshot. 11-5. The Polish are crumbling. And all the damage that Neil M actually did with the CZ-75 in that upper BAPS area did make the life of the rest of the infused players a lot easier. And now, infused should go on to at least make this 12-5. No armor on XPC because they planted on the pistol round. That should in theory mean that they can force by come the next round. AK's up. There we go. Molotov going down. And they're all going to be one by one running straight into the M4. The Norwegian mastermind that is Reeston. Three kills for him. And finally, the Kalashnikovs are out for XPC. And for anyone wondering why this XPC team is suddenly Polish and no longer Romanian, basically the entire team changed in the org and uh, yeah. So this is a Polish team. Even though they're in a bit of a tough situation because I guess it's not their fault that they've had to drop down into this lower bracket, this GSL format group. Because it was... The Romanians, the old XPC team, who are to blame for that. So now the Polish need to try and clean up after the Romanian mess. But, so far not so good. Infused looking very comfortable here on the CT side. XPC have gone to the mid control, but it's about what they do with it, and that's not good. Norbiak getting caught out by himself, just facing connector. I'm sorry, XPC, but you're not going to win any rounds playing like this. Neil M catches a glimpse as well of Lunatic and is going to put him down all the way from 100 HP to 51 with a nade towards Delpan. And suddenly, the Polish attack. is almost near to non-existent. Looking at the positives though, Crucial and Reeston, looking to protect this A-bomb site, are both quite low on HP. But a good feeling tells me that XPC may not check this corner that Aaron's hiding in. He, in fact, gives away his own position and turns it into a 5 versus 2. Make that a 5 versus 1. As Diamond now needs to clutch up against Team Infuse with the bomb on the ground. And you guessed it, he's not able to. Crucial lands the headshot. And Team Infused marching towards victory. Very one-sided game so far. And not much XPC can do about it. Got their chance to go for that first gun round. As Raheem would say, ba-bam, back on the eco. And those nades from Neil Emmett Co. will make the infused life a lot more easier. Both Neil M and Zed taking out the trash. And they should be able to finalize the final kill with a beautiful USPS headshot. So there we go, 14-15. Scoreboard-wise, Reeston on top, no surprise there. 
Aaron on 13, Crucial on 15, Neil M on 10, and Zed on 12. Meanwhile, for XPC, we've got 14 on Lunatic, 12 on Diamond, 10 on Norbiak, 11 on DJV, and 7 on uh, DHN. But hello, GoTV decides to lag up. Crucial and Recent both get two kills to kick things off in this round at least. And Aaron will get one of his own, make it a double, and he could even go on to get a hat trick here. DJV trying to kill him, but he's not going to be able to. Fantastic play from Aaron. And Team Infused at the moment flying the UK flag in proud fashion. And this is XPC's game to try and salvage. Game? XPC's chance to try and salvage something. We're going to run straight into Aaron. As did in the last round. He's dealt damage onto quite a few of them. But it's not going to be enough all by himself. Lunatic is going to find the kill onto Crucial. But Reeston, out of nowhere, pops out and finds a headshot. And now, it's three on three. DJV gets a headshot onto Reeston. Through the wall. But Neil M, with the auto sniper, will get revenge onto DHN. Two versus two. Bomb is ticking. Zed, oh, just about falls to his death. And finally... Something for the Polish team to scream and shout about, unless Neil M can clutch things. He's gotten two kills so far with this auto sniper. Surely he can't make it three. Oh, he will do! What a clutch from Neil M! He's normally the infused manager, but he's shown us that he can pop heads and bodies too. 16 5 the score in favor of infused. And don't go anywhere, guys. Map number two cash will be coming very, very soon.